Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to the Reloom live stream. I am Josh, your host, and we have Adam and Dan here in the house. How's it going, guys? Hey guys, good, going good. well. How are you? Awesome, good, good, good. All right, so today we are doing it. We are jumping on on a live stream speed build on Webflow, and Adam's gonna take us home. So we are gonna cover Gumroad, the website and we are not going to waste a lot of time so we're just going to jump right into it we have an hour that is our goal so high stakes Adam. Sorry. your reputation's on the line <laughs> nice nice all right well where should we start i guess let's go over the website first that's okay. probably a good good place to start okay before we do jump in uh we're going to welcome some people in, but some rules today. We're actually going to do something different. We're going to bring some of you guys onto the live stream. So how that's going to work is DM me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is right here. So just send me a message. Let me know if you want to ask specific questions. Um, and we know like the live stream is about five second delay. So it's pretty, it's pretty instant. So if you have specific questions on what Adam's <coughs> doing on the build, hit me up, I'll send you a link. We'll bring you on and then you can just chill with us for a bit. So today is going to be like a design hangout. So it'll be a different vibe. Okay, so with that, let's jump into it. All right, what are we building today? Well, <laughs> we are building this lovely website, Gumroad. Uh, Josh and I did a stream on like good web design mm -hmm. probably like a month ago. And this was one of the uh, websites we were speaking about. And the reason why I like this website so much is that it is quite simple, I guess, from a build perspective. There are some like nice, uh, nice elements to it, but it's not overdone. It's really nice. But what makes this website really cool is that it has a very unique aesthetic uh, and like really solid graphic design. Uh, and so this to me, I, this, this website's memorable to me. So uh, very keen to build this. Uh, I'm going to be using the Reloom library. And another reason why I want to build this website is because the Reloom library components look very different to this website. And that's the point, right? Because the intention uh, behind the Reloom library components is to make them as adaptable and flexible as possible. Uh, and the point of that is so that they can adapt to any client project that you're working on. So this is like a good, I guess, demo or good test of the product. Mm -hmm. Every time I do one of these, I learn more about, you know, uh, the, the Reloom library and how we're building things. So I love to do these. Uh, and yeah, I guess it's also shows what's possible in, in to do in, in, in an hour, uh, because I believe I can build this website in one hour. So I'm actually curious in the chat, how long would you say this website <laughs> homepage would take you to build? I'm curious. Just the one page, right? Just yeah. the one page? This, this yeah. whole page. So uh, let's break it down. Responsive too. So what, what yeah. sections do we have? We got the hero section here. Hero All right. section. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, Split 50-50. And then we, we got, got this like marquee thing here. Yeah. Then we have, um, this grid. We have like a, this grid section, which basically gets like a CMS collection, pulls in a CMS collection. Um, Aaron said it'll take him a month. <laughs> yeah, anyways, keep Are going. We... Yeah, so then there's this other full width section here. Yeah, we got this section with this like little little Audi guy. And by the way, this is not designed. You have all the assets already go. I have all yep. the assets ready yep. to go. I'm not going to be building this lotty. Um, Webflow animation. It's the Webflow build. Right. Yeah, it's the Webflow build. Um, right. Then we so... have some like section, some like feature sections. Right. Got testimonial testimonials section. Another image left, text right, another testimonial, running banner, and then another split. So so these are very common components that Realm has. Yeah, I mean we we do have a lot of these components. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> what what are some answers we got? 15, all right. We 15, got one. Oh, week. with or without Realm right, Library. Mike. I'm saying with with. No, 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 without. without, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know without, without, without really maybe library. 15 days. Oh, Jordan saying, don't forget parallax effect in the hitter, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, I've yeah. got that covered, Jordan. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I'd say oh, faster than Adam. Lad's firing. Well, shot. Uh, we've finally got a really rumble. Um, <laughs> is that a challenge? <laughs> 
All right, Vlad, start now and we'll see. <laughs> hey, shout out to Vat. 4.30 in the morning in India. Thanks for joining. Wow. What a legend. Oh, can, uh, I, can I try another? Also in the chats, can I try another curveballs? How much would you charge for something like this too? Yeah. Webflow yeah, development yeah. only. All right, as you guys right. know, I'm on the agency side. Yeah, what's the spread? What do you guys think? How much is that going to cost? Like what, what, like, obviously a time it would take you to build, but then what would you charge for a Webflow dev only? Yeah, let us know, guys. All right, let's welcome some people. Kevin, good to see you. Hey, Sean. Aaron is excited. Robert, good to see you. Uh, Nikhil from India, what's up? Aurel, Aurel, oh, sorry, I'm butchering this. Aurel, Aurelian. Aurelian. Uh, Aurelian. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, guys, shall we just jump right into it? Yeah, let's, let's jump right into it. Okay, so, so, so it's nine. It's nine uh, uh, our time. It's nine oh six. So great. we're starting now officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have I guess. A uh, uh, what yeah, I'll do. Good. You want to show us the setup first? Yeah. So what I'll do, what what I'll do is I, I think I'll I'll build like I'll build the page and then the fancier things like the nav bars and the parallax um, and some of the like fancier things on this website I'll tackle at the end. Um, so right. I'll do like sort of like a speed mode and then I'll tackle some of the like trickier parts to show you guys uh, how I would approach building it. Like this nav bar is pretty sick and happy to break that down. Um, now, yeah, I'm happy to start the clock now and I can sort of All right. just, just, just roll. Let's do it. Three, two, oh. one. The timer is on. All right, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, as we saw before, like a lot of these components are repeatable, right? So the way I like to think about it is build, build once and use it twice or, or more. So okay. I'm just gonna like sort of identify like the, the reusable components first. So, you know, you got the nav bar that's gonna be used across the entire website. Uh, you got this like hero section. Um, you've got this uh, marquee thing that's like slowed down. I don't, I don't know why that's slowed down. Um, we got this grid section. We've got this like text with an image at the bottom. Now this section is unique. I actually don't think we have a component like this. So I'd probably mm -hmm. just build this one from scratch. Uh, we've got this like call to action section. And then we've got another feature section that's on the left, uh, image on the left, text on the right. And there's and there's multiple of these. So I'm just gonna build one of those. Same with the testimonials, there's multiple of those. I'm just gonna build one of those and I'm gonna reuse them. Um, so anyway, let's let's jump in. All right. Navbar, let's go. All right, so let's just do, Dan and I, we're gonna commentate. Adam's gonna do his thing. So, so put the nav bar in here. Play by play. So just copy, paste, boom. All right. So let's turn up the tunes a bit. Huh. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to find one. a feature section, hero feature section. Now it's full bleed. So I've got to find something that's that's full bleed, which we do have. So I'm just gonna go image video on the right uh, and snag this, this bad boy. Paste okay. that in. All right, so the next one is going to be this marquee thing, which we do have in banners. Mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna go banners. Interesting, so you're using the, uh, the little Banner drop 11. down, the drop down menu. On your real uh yeah i switch i switch between that's so weird marquee the banner one. so there i don't you. know why it's duplicating all of a sudden okay so let's keep going um what else we got okay so we got this section we got like a three column Great. this is going to be like cms so yeah. i'd probably go ahead and i probably just use the blog uh, so like a blog section mm -hmm. with three columns. Yeah, I find the blog section has so. a lot of components, a lot of nice cards. Yeah. Yeah. So go. that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll use that, that, that'll, that'll work. Okay. Next one is 
Okay, so a bit of text and an image. And probably center, go to feature sections. Center justified. We got an image video at the bottom. And text align centered. So I'll use this layout 142. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Um, and then for this section, I'm just going to custom build that CTA section. Let's go CTA sections. And I think it was like alliance text in the middle. So this one's perfect for that. Okay, cool. And then we've got the full bleed, but now the image is on the left. So we actually don't have a feature section like this. It's only a hero header section, but I'll just use that. And it's important that I'll actually change the tag, uh, which I'll show you in a second why I do that. But for SEO purposes, um, I'll make sure that it's not actually a header. So for now that I'm here, I'll just make sure I'll go to the settings and change the tag to section. Mm. Um, cool. All right. And then lastly, I think we've got the testimonial section which is text on the left. I think there's actually one we have in testimonials that's very similar. So I'll just use that. Yeah, I'll just use this yeah, one. Cool. <laughs> All right, so I just, I'll just i just flip this. Okay, yeah, nice, Cool. Easy. All right, so that's good. And then the rest I can repeat, right? So build once, use it twice. So again, I can repeat that one uh, for, for this. I can repeat, repeat this. I'll probably use the same, same section as this. I might repeat that or I'll just quickly add that. I'll see. Hey, killing it with the tunes, Josh. Nice. Got that sexy saxophone. <laughs> Sexy sax. So you do all the components first before you jump into design. Like you do the layout. Yeah, yeah. The ones that I, the ones that I need. Just, just because. Another thing, like with the Relum library, if you want to avoid class duplication and like be able to style uh, one button and style it across all the components, mm -hmm. then it's the best way of going about it. Okay, so this is sort of similar to the hero section. Um, okay. But it's going to be a little bit different because it's not going to be uh, a hero. So, um, wait, let's go back yet. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that in, and I'm actually just whilst I have it right here, yeah, uh, I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this class and call it like thirty set. Uh, let's go at X just for now, just so like when I make changes to this. Um, or you know what, I could probably just reuse, actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna delete that. I'm not gonna consider building this because I can reuse this component again, but just flip it. And then this CTA section, I can reuse. This section, I'll probably just use the test, uh, probably the testimonial section. And then this section, I can uh, reuse one of the existing components. Okay, now I need the footer. So the footer. Nice. Hey and guys. I'm done and I can start building. If you're watching and you want to get on and join us and just chill today's going to be design and chill so bust out your drinks it's going to be a good time if you want to join us though dm me on twitter at the josh low yeah come come hang out with us up here <laughs> come chill come chill all right so next thing is i'm going to start the styling process so i'm going to add in the font. So this website Gumroad uses one font. Love websites that do this and can pull it off. They almost use just one font, uh, one font weight as well, except for buttons. Um, okay. They so use like a a font weight of just like regular or normal. Gotcha. So you go straight to the body and then you change it and then it affects all the. Well, yeah. correct, correct. So it. I'll go straight to the body 
and that will just affect every single font. If it's one font, great. Yep. Um, if it's if it's like a different font for for the, the headings, headings yeah. then I'll do like the unique font for the headings. Okay. But I'll just start off with like one font that I use across like all the smaller text, yep. and then I make the headings unique or vice versa. Gotcha. Um, so now I just need to go through the headings and um, quickly just update them. In built into Relu Library are like uh, responsive, like we've we've built like what we believe to be the best uh, sizing. But for this website, they have like their own sizing, right? So I, I've sort of gone through this website and I've identified the size of the fonts. Right. Uh, and so I'm just going to put them in. So like, I'm pretty sure the H1 is like 90 pixels. So I'm going to enter H1. All right, so I'm going to enter 90 pixels divided by 16 rems. Nice. And that gives me the rem, the rem amount. Now, what they also do is they reduce letter spacing. So okay. they use minus 2% letter spacing. So in, I guess, web web terms, that's like minus 0.02 EMs. And a lot of websites do this with larger font sizes. Just makes the larger font sizes look a lot better when they're a little bit more compact because at bigger sizes, the space between the letters mm. increase. So you'll notice that a lot of websites do this. Um, anyway. So we got the H2, that is 72 pixels. So I'm just going to 72 divided by 16 rems, right? And then I'm going to go minus 0.2 EMs here as well. Awesome. Now, got, now as Adam's doing then, that, um, <clears throat> you'll notice that in Webflow, it kind of has its own built-in calculator. So if you want to do division of like pixels divided by rems and stuff, you can just use all those operators plus subtract times all that good stuff it's good stuff all right so i'm just gonna so with, with the larger font i was doing minus like uh two zero point two ems now i'm gonna do minus zero point zero one ems so just halving it just because it's getting gotcha. as the font gets smaller the letter spacing will reduce as well. So Aaron is wondering how you determine that. I think it's like the one to 16 ratio. I think that is, uh, that was, that's based off of the client first, right? And also, so Reloom's components, the, the sizing just decided to go. Yeah, down, yes, right? correct, correct. So uh, that is client first is in rent and that will enable me to, um, that will enable me to apply a uh, fluid responsiveness to the fonts as well. But keeping everything in rems, uh, there's advantages to that, um, which include uh, better for accessibility, uh, which I think Google also favors it because it's good for accessibility. Um, and what that means is when you're using rems, if someone changes like their browser, their browser settings to make fonts larger, then the fonts on the uh, website will update whereas that doesn't happen when you're using pixels cool. keep going at so, it yeah doing great okay so, so let me just do the classes now by the way guys this is like such a time consuming process this part yeah but we're almost there really so so this setup when you're updating the style guide that takes the majority of the time and then once you have that up you'll a just bulk fly, of the hey? time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So another thing is with the text larger, just got to update that because I'm uh, pretty sure it's 24 pixels. So it's, they use quite large text on this website. And yeah, strange. Base. I've never seen such big, big headers. Is it, even the, even the nav bar. It's now huge. I've added in the colors cause that's a time consuming process. Now oh, the okay. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to style the button. Now the button has like this this Ooh. like interaction here it's Ooh. actually quite it's quite a big interaction it's not it's it's like requires you to actually build this there's layers to this button it's not very straightforward i'm not going to build this interaction i'm just going to build what this sort of button looks like yeah um and so i'm going to just sort of roughly guess what the height is i'm pretty sure it's like it'd be like this So I'm holding down to do this, I'm holding down option command so that the things, uh, 
uh, on the other side of the, the values uh, parallel update. So you can you have that control here where you can go option command and you can control it, the parallel um, values. All right, so I'm just gonna knock this back and I'm pretty sure for this button they use 24 pixels. Add that by rams. Um, and that's a good button. So that will be the button. I think they also have like a curve. So I think they have a radius of uh, four pixels. It's cool. All right. And then the other button that they have featured on this page is like a button link with like uh, with an icon. So we actually have a button link here. Um, so I'm just going to style the button link first. Um, I think it is. Uh, let me see. I think it's 20 pixels, so. Okay, and they use a heavier print font weight. And then for the actual image, we have that image. So I'm just gonna pull that through. Nice. That looks a little large. So I'm gonna knock this back to an icon XX small. And then like a nice little trick now that you can save your own components is like if this button, if I'm going to use this across pages, mm -hmm. um, what I can do is I, I mean, you can use symbols, but what you can do is, is just create a component here, oh, put it into snap. a folder. Yeah, we Sneaky. go. So you can use um, that across the site now. Correct. Um, and I might even do that for the button, although the button like, but yeah, doesn't the so button if once you change the class here doesn't that apply to the entire website you don't why do you have to paste back in the uh, yeah, good point it's just button? it's just when i'm working across the site um i'll, I'll show you like it, it might come in handy it might not interesting okay so let's go back over to the home page all right let's start building okay so this nav bar is different so let's go with Okay, Fun I'm probably going to like remove this. Kevin saying one RAM equals 16 pixels. That's right. That's the scale. Correct. In which we're using. So just moving from absolute measurements to relative. What's the EM stand for? Relative something, something. <laughs> Let's Google it. <laughs> relative. Yeah, M. Good one. I'm going to have to fix this up. Jeez. <laughs> Root EM, sorry. So these buttons are tricky. I'm trying to figure them out. Okay. They don't have any border radius. Okay, cool. Now make this secondary. Because this button is white with black text. So you just have to make a unique class for that button because it doesn't happen anywhere else on the website. Yeah, exactly. That's good. good point, Dan. From the, I'm still, you know, I'm still actually learning. Yeah, that's also, true. What you do? Sorry, it's like oh, yeah. it's it's sort of difficult building this under time pressure. And, yeah, that's um, the whole point. Just, we're and, we're just slowing down, Adam. I'm doing. So, Adam, could you take the time <laughs> to explain how Webflow works? <laughs> oh, we uh, got a um, question here, Josh, for you. Yeah. How? All right, Ori. How do you have this awesome live stream design with the background, your camera squares, and the pop comment pop-ups? Well, uh, we use this amazing streaming platform called Ecamm Live. And so with that, you can basically just design your own custom layout, 
uh, different windows, overlays. You can do a lot. It's uh, pretty great. We're actually working on updating it even further um, in the next few weeks. So just look out for some more cool things like the gradients in the background. Uh, plan to ha kind of have it like move and have a video, but right now it's just like a still image. But yeah, you can put in like countdown timers, um, or yeah, in this case, it's a timer. It's a lot of a lot of cool stuff that you can add in here, and so you can pull like comments. Great stuff. Yeah, nice. So yeah, I, I think so. I asked the question before. But I'm still curious if you guys don't want to share your secrets. But um, yeah, what for like for a one pager? Yes. What What do you think? What do, What would you try? Because Because this is interesting, right? Like from an agency perspective, right? So I understand, you know, Adam can build this in X amount of time for us, right? Like let's say he was one of the guys on the team, and I'd know that Adam could build this in a day, half a day, polished, you know, probably a day. But then I have to start considering. All right, cool. Well, because we can do it quicker, do I charge less? Or do we keep the same amount? Let's just say X amount per page, but because we can still do it quicker, that's just increased profit margin. So I'm curious, if you guys can do it quicker now using uh, the library, would you decrease what you charge and just obviously work on quantities or would you keep the same amount, but still, um, yeah, just get it done quicker. So I'm, I'm curious if any guys got any, uh, feel free to leave any comments uh to let to let me know what you think about that good question yeah i'm i'm, I'm curious about that too dan it's a good question it's interesting right? like, guys. Do, you, do you drop or you hey guys i've built oh shit <laughs> <laughs> i've built i've built the nav bar okay we're good to go nice. to the next the next phase okay should, by the way i'm going to be renaming things. at the end using the uh fin suites folders it's a lifesaver with that stuff oh yeah but Let's quickly just add in the content that I don't need. So go from zero to All right. Dollar. Okay, sweet. Yeah, Dan, cool so Ori is saying yeah, yeah, HD, probably 4K. Um, it's about right. Okay, yeah, so like keep pricing the same, but it gives some extra margin for project creep. So I thought, oh, okay. well, sorry. that's what we do as well. Like you, you, you don't necessarily change and make your prices any cheaper. It's just that you're improving the profit margin per project, which yeah, naturally because you've got tools to use it to, to speed up the process, keep it the same, which is good, right? From an agency perspective, we can take on now probably double the amount of projects, but still be able to deliver on it. So. That's good. That's what makes things interesting. Yeah, you know, I've been learning for pricing. You basically charge for the final product. You don't charge for how long it takes you because as, as a service provider, yes. like, 100%. or sorry, I, as a client, I'm not paying a service provider for, I don't care how long it takes for you to do it. I just want it done. And so done. If, if you can get it done even faster and sooner, that I should be willing to pay more for that. Right. So yeah, well, even, even, yeah. yeah, even you get rewarded, you get rewarded. Yeah, exactly. Like why would you, you go you smash something out for a, a day yeah. and then charge less? Like you're getting rewarded for being better. Yeah, exactly. And then you get incentivized to, mm. to produce even more, pump it out, man. Look at this. This is just like coming together so quick. It is it is so I'm now just working on the this section so okay. it has some features uh, um, some like stickers I'd call them um, and I'm just going to make sure that this wrapper that we have mm -hmm. uh, we tend to wrap like images in wrappers so that so that if you do overlay anything you can do it quite easily because you have the wrapper so I'll set that to relative and then I'm going to make this absolute positioning so that will enable me to have uh, this sticker float over the top and not impact the layout of, 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 of this image inside of it. Right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also just gonna use like, I'm gonna estimate what I think for the positioning. So it could be like that. So um, yeah, this is where you kind of feel it out, right? Eh? Yeah. 
So I'd probably, I'd probably just like refer to what's here. Okay, so I'd say it's probably minus 25 rand and minus 18. Cool, that's good. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste that and I'm gonna duplicate this. And for the other one, uh, let's see what it is. Yeah, so it's the coins. So I just go uh, coin image, all right? And I I'm just gonna this. pull in that. So you're really about designing one component and then once that's kind of done, then you duplicate it and then reposition it. Exactly. Do it exactly. once and then duplicate. Do it once, duplicate. Exactly. That's the way to go. Build once, use twice. Right. And so cool. I know, so you're using REMS, you're not using absolute um, dimensions, no. like pixels, because when you scale Just because, it, it, exactly. it should adjust accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's looking nice. good. Um, let's move on to this. Okay, so this this is already built in. We already have this component built in. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just need to like add the text. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna like remove this text. Um, so what I'll do is I'm gonna delete all, all the reloom. Mm. Ah, I hate when Webflow does this. I'm gonna delete all the uh, all the text that I need. I'm just going to start with one, okay. and I'm going to use this as like the uh, the control of the the text inside it. So I'm going to make that 72 pixels. I'm oh, sorry, rent. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate this this div. So. I'm gonna to go to create the circle. I just pressed option eight, right? And then I'm going to just sort of line this up. So probably do like that. To be honest, I'm not sure how this is gonna scale. See, there's there's gaps, because this is how this sort of component works. Um, so what I'm gonna do probably is I'm probably just gonna use, I know this goes against client first, but for this particular unique situation, I'm probably just going to use VW because I reckon that will probably scale better. Okay. Yeah, I'll just go six VW um, for this particular interaction. Yeah, see how that oh, just nice. scales better with the width. Okay, so there you can see the smaller text coming in. So the way we've built this is so that it's very reusable. So we've optimized for reusability. So basically, I just take this this marquee div, mm -hmm. right? with like its, its text wrappers yeah. and I just duplicate that and now I've built the interaction and it, it, will, it will work. So essentially what yeah. happens is the marquee div moves, when it when it moves 50% across its width, yeah. it then resets and it, it, it looks like it's just looping. Looks like it's just oh. looping. That's, yeah. that's based uh, on the animation that's already it's built. Ba there. Exactly, right. yeah, yeah. So it's based on the animation that's already built. Uh, so I'll just convert this. Awesome. Nice. All right, cool. And then I'm with this, I might just probably bump this down to 1.2 because I feel like it's the height of it. So no, let's see what that looks like. Okay, nice. now it says Reloom Library. It's probably the wrong text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I well, like I said, it's our new website. Let's do it. Yeah. That's that <laughs> subliminal messaging to sign up for Reloom Library. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, 26 yes, minutes yes. in. Dang. We're nearly halfway. Nearly halfway. Oh, yeah, no, okay. I'm warmed up. I gotta, I gotta step my game up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, All right. So. Let's go, Adam. You All should, right. So we should have a punishment. If you don't finish it in an hour, guys, what, what should <laughs> what Adam's it? punishment be? Push ups. <laughs> we, should, we should change. Uh, we should change your Twitter title for like a week to something. <laughs> <laughs> no, then someone will take Adam Mura. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> no, not his handle, but like his uh, his, uh, like role, his, his role uh, subtitle or whatever. Yeah, we're gonna make more bets on this. So yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. finish it in time, Reloom pays you a thousand dollars. This is gonna be I'm an just expensive gonna remove, stream. <laughs> for this one, I'm just gonna remove this image wrapper because I won't need it. Um, yeah. I probably won't need this either. Uh, and then I'm just going to probably use this as like a, a header. Um, oh, nice. 
Uh, oh, this is the one where you're, the, you're converting this at, into yeah, let's look at, CMS. So I'll use this for the popular tags. So okay. it actually comes in handy here. Okay, and then I can actually use this custom wrapper to control the spacing here. Actually, I might just go on there and bump that. Cool. All right, sweet. Now, all that's missing from here is we just need an image and we also need the popular tags. So um, I'm going to add an image. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call this blog. Uh, I'm gonna call this blog 35. Just because I'm I'm keeping the naming consistent because FinSwift come out with this folder structure and I can literally I can change the ID of that component so like the blog 35 once and it and it applies to the entire um, yeah. the entire like div, uh, which is which is great. So I, I'll actually at this point use blog 35 as like the ID until I change it later. So I'm going to call this um, blog 35 icon. Uh, and I'm just going to give it like a little bit of spacing. Nice. For those of you who are wondering if you are signed up as the uh, FinSuite Pro member, you have access to one of their new features, which is folders. And essentially folders is just a way of renaming um, classes in a batch format which saves a lot of time especially when you're importing all these realm components of layout 235 blog 35 etc etc um, that's a big request that uh, a lot of people have been asking so it's gonna be good for this hey guys one, what i'm doing here I, this is pretty important i guess as well right. is um i'm actually creating a cms collection here and what the way that we build like components uh, because you can't copy and paste components across projects in Webflow. That's just like not possible because you need to have the, the matching CMS database and it's just not possible to do. So the way we build these components is to make it super easy for you to use CMS collections because we match the structure of the, the collection. So you'll see we have list, wrapper, list, and then item. So all you need to do is you just need to copy and paste the classes from these and for some like lists you just need to like update the uh update the uh the, the grid and then you can basically just copy and paste this item inside and now you've created a um oh, same collection i was trying to right? learn that. so, that's, that's actually so so you've you've put it uh, you put a cms collection in as an element and then you've updated the classes to then be able to put a static element into a collection. Correct. So all the folders. So, uh, that's so cool. I honestly was trying to do this a couple of days ago. Hey guys, if yes, you have specific hundreds. questions on CMS or what Adam's doing, hop on in. DM me. Okay guys, I'm gonna now put a collection inside of here. Now I don't, I'm gonna have to build this one from scratch. Okay, collection list cannot be placed in a link. Interesting. So what I'll do is can't put that in a link. So I'll drag this out and I'll make this link um, absolute. So it positions over the top of the item, which I'll need to go position relative. Um, so I got item link now is is like separate. It's, out, it's not wrapping the div. It's like placed on top of the div. All right. So now I can. I can actually build a collection inside of it. Uh, so let's go ahead, do that, and pull in the popular tags. And I'm just gonna make this uh, vertical, like this. Now for this collection list, I'm just gonna call it blog35 list at tags list. I'm gonna make this flat box, and then I'm gonna go wrap and then the, I'll do a link block for the tag. And Adam, he just pulled a quick command there. That's command E and it pulls up a quick search and you can type in any components or elements you can pull up. It's a nice little shortcut. Uh, Aaron says, feels like I'm watching magic. I <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> oh, 
Adam Still. Webflow, Webflow God at work. I guess what's crazy, Josh, I like, obviously know what's going on in terms of like Webflow, but it still gets me when I watch this and see, yeah. and see, see like the, uh, the possibilities. So fast. It's nuts. I think like when, once you know the fundamentals, once you know about, you know, RAMs and client first mm. and all these things, like you could literally create at the speed of thought if you just know it well. So it really, you know, really, sh really shows that it's good to invest in, into knowing your craft, knowing your tools. Oh, it's massive. Like this is this is your livelihood and these things these little hacks you know even just the command e <laughs> it, it adds up you know when you're building a website and when you're when you're deep in the weeds these small little um improvements these minuscule ones add yeah. up over time when you're doing three four five websites it it um it helps yeah great penny hey penny good to see you she said that's super helpful Aaron just started using command E. Yeah, that's a great little shortcut. Cool. All right. So another thing is that the reason why that we, we had to separate the, the reason why we had to separate the, the blog item link and have it as, as an overlay on top of the, uh, the blog item. So we have blog item content and then we have the blog item and separate it and we're using absolute and we need it to overlay on top of it is because we actually have two links here. We have a link to this card and then another link to specific elements, uh, so specific tags. So we can go to animations as a whole or we can go straight to mm. Blender or 3D model. Now to achieve this, you'll need to be clever with Z index. So basically mm -hmm. at the moment, if I hover over, I won't be able to click these. It will basically just click the Oh, the blog overall. item link. Yeah. yeah. So what I'll need to do is I'll just need to bump up, make this relative and bump up the Z index to two. And now I can click, click bits and then these as well. Um, and so that's how you sort of use links inside of links. That's how you can set that up. So you're not one of those guys who just make the Z index a 9999. You actually have a kind of a methodical. Nah, that, that's, keep it clean, right? That, that can, yeah, in the long run, that's going <laughs> to stuff you up. Uh, but from my experience anyway. You're all right. Um, all right, so let's see what, what's next. I should be able to speed through this one. This is so insane. Copy this. All right, I think, I think it's like a heading large. I'm just, I'm just to it, guessing these at this point to speed up the process. So for uh, those who don't I, know, yeah, go ahead. I'm no, no, go, go ahead. I wasn't going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, important. yeah, you go ahead. You, you focus, but yeah, um, you'll see Adam here. He's using these class names on the top, right? If you guys are new. Um, this is client first. It's basically, uh, a common language that we all use and it's very functional and so there's a lot of spacing sizing um, structures all baked into these classes so it just makes it once you are familiar with it, it takes some time to get it to get used to it but once you learn it um, just like learning a certain language you start building super super quick also Josh has massive implications on the community, right? Like if we all start building client first, mm -hmm. think about think about the possibilities of, especially that you can create your own library now. If we all make components using client first, then we've essentially just built the biggest library of compatible components. And I feel like that's that's it. That's like that's the cool part. Everyone, if we I know obviously you can create your own components now in our libraries and, and, and you can make it whatever you want, but we highly, well, I highly recommend if we do create components, use client first, learn it, because once you get the fundamentals of it done, the, 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 the possibility is yes, on your own sites, of course, it's incredibly powerful and useful, but from a community level, imagine if we all submitted client first components. We've just made a, <laughs> we've yeah. just supercharged uh the library uh, for, for everyone in the community so i feel like that that's that's the cool thing about it. like there's, there's the community benefit and also yeah on an individual level building projects now and, and doing what we're doing 
yep it helps as well at the end of the day it is collaborating right it is like yeah i think that that's when it gets really fun it's like oh now that we speak the same language let's see like what can be built when we compare this top designer with this other top designer and then smash them together and, and it's just like oh, seamless. also also on, a, on another level right like so we've had to you know in the agency side we've had to pass on projects across like so for example we've had um to to get someone else to do the build right or we have to get two people to do the build um in the roster but what's really cool is that because we're all using the same language it's it's okay it's okay to pass over that uh webflow build project to someone else because we can dive straight in we understand exactly built the library uses client first so the there's no like getting to understand and learn and learning curve or or, or blocker when it comes to um building we can just dump straight in so i can shift between two guys from the roster for a build and not right. lose time uh because they got to figure out how it's been built it, that oh, yeah. that's also insane as well from a collaboration point of view within an agency mm -hmm. yeah like handoff is huge actually yeah the biggest time suck is handing off or coordinating with like different agencies different ways to do things so again having that universal language that oh, that easy. actually opens your business up internationally or for wherever like and whoever decides to design with client first exactly uh, if we all use the library and client first webflow will just be all it's all come together a lot easier yeah oh man i'm i am personally gonna yes. rewatch this like three or four times yeah. <laughs> there's so we much do, going I was on trying to, yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot. There's like, there's basic setup. There's like very advanced stuff, and Adam's just flying through it. I think I just saw like, did you use that button that you saved in the library and reuse that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we did that. Uh, That's the other thing as well. I feel I feel like for Webflow development um, projects, is that you if you get your assets all sorted before you start building like because adam prepped his assets right you mm -hmm. got all the assets the same thing downloading more from figma if you prep your assets right it shows how you can just be just in webflow and i feel like that also naturally improves the the efficiency and the speed of your builds right you're not jumping back and forth from figma so if you just dump all your assets get it all sorted uh and then dive straight into webflow uh, it's a yeah it's just a, a lot more smarter way to build as well they get your assets pause. online. Pause, pause, pause. Uh, okay. Pause the timeline, whatever. I'm just going to explain something. Um, right. So a lot of people ask me or ask us, you know, um, could you add this to UI elements or could you add this particular co component? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're going to add those 100%. But in the time being, if you find some, like a particular component inside of a, uh, another component that you find that you reuse, for example, uh, we have the list components not yet we haven't added in it into the ui elements section yet by the way ui elements section if you click that you can go and see that um, we haven't added it in yet but go pick that out yourself create it as a component and save it to your own personal library so that you can use it whenever same with the social media list people will ask like can you mm. create like a, a a row of like social media icons that i can just mm. paste into a nav bar paste into a footer um, we haven't created that yet, but you can go do that yourself. Open one of our components and pick out an element that you use and just save it to your components. So that's what I've done. And it's going to help me because this list uh, is used here. So all I need to do is just copy that and just paste that in. Right. And I have that list ready nice. to go. Nice. So good. So you're going to put in the arrow delete the other two and just copy and paste exactly build yeah. once use multiple times love it love that so anyway i could spend all day doing the the copy but i'm not going to i'm just going to continue moving sounds good yeah. um yeah oh only for gotta, headers gotta start the timer again <laughs> oh yeah no cheating 20 minutes <laughs> 40 minutes in all right guys uh christine <laughs> thanks glad you're enjoying it you guys share the best webflow tutorials in the world right now hey if you are getting a lot of value uh 
a great way for you to let us know is to smash that like like button. Let us know. Smash that like button. And subscribe. And subscribe. Smash that subscribe yeah. button. And subscribe here. Sorry, guys. I hate being one of those those guys, but I just had to say it. You gotta do it. <laughs> nah, we gotta do it. You gotta do it. I'm just gonna uh, be open about it. No, but seriously, um, if you guys want, if you guys like what you're seeing and you want to see more, or if you have specific websites that you want Adam to tackle, mm, um, let us know. Let us know right now. S um, suggest some uh, live builds for us, websites yeah. that you'd like us to see built. Slater, he made his name. <laughs> Heyman Library's Webflow God. <laughs> oh, <you're right. laughs> uh, well, if you get it in an that hour, you're officially. You, you, yeah. I've got to earn that title. title. you got to earn the web. you got to earn the. Yeah, yeah, that's the, right. WG. The WG. Maybe we should make. you got the, the Reeloom Rumble and shout out to Caleb, who's the current <laughs> Reeloom Rumble champ. Yes. And then, and then we got to get the WG title. The Webflow God titles, like who can build the quickest in an hour? We should have like, you know, the dumb road, right? Let's just say if anyone can submit that, let's say Ooh. obviously you got to time it. You got to screen yeah. share it, Josh. You screen, yeah, share your yeah, build, yeah. yeah, submit it, and yeah, then you get the W G. <laughs> we'll create the W G hey. title. That'd be awesome. <laughs> It's like WWE, you got your different uh, belts. W, yeah, yeah <laughs> different belts, like... different belts. R really rumble from, so it's currently Caleb from Flow Gurus, yeah. and then uh, Adam's the, <laughs> is the current WG. But if you want to be challenged the WG, you got to submit Gumroad in an hour. That's right. Guys, we got a real rumble happening in two weeks. Yeah. So look out for that. That's going to be good. Again, if you guys want to get involved, you want to flex your muscles. Honestly, at the end of the day, just have fun. Um, reach me out on Twitter, and we'll uh, we'll get you lined up. Yeah, I'll be good. Two weeks we've got that for Rumble. Cool. All right. All right. So I'm just building like all the testimonials at once here. So the images, yeah, when like they had the placeholder, you really just, you didn't change the size of the images too much, right? You just really replaced it. And, uh, I did. I set like a it. max, I set a max width just because okay. I feel like these would scale because they're quite big. Yeah. So just like a max width. So it scales okay. nicely. It doesn't get too, too large nice. uh, because remember we have these things that overlay on top of it and like, yeah. we probably want to get some decent placement. So if they scale too large, you know, the, the stickers might get lost. I think the fact that they sort of like overlap and are positioned the way they are makes them like stand out a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I've applied um, applied that. And I think that's what they've done too. Yeah, cool. So now I'm just gonna add the stickers in. Um, again, I'm just gonna duplicate. Um, I'm gonna go testimonial 13. And for this, I'm going to call this uh, pen image. Yeah. And I'm just like guessing here, but that's good. Good guess. <laughs> so good, Adam. That's... I'm complimenting myself. It's a bit, a bit sad. <laughs> I'll just go with the stickers for now. Okay, cool. For this one, free. So normally, I believe Adam, his normal setup would be to have a second screen and he had to have like real components on the one screen and then web on the main page, oh, on, the, on the main display. That's, let us know guys, do you guys design with two screens or just one? What's your guys' setup? Or do you guys have three? Gee, three screens. Three, there we are. I, uh, I recently, posted on Twitter, I shared my setup and then other people shared theirs too. So cool. Really cool. Are you a three screen, Josh? I have, uh, right now I'm looking at my MacBook Pro 
and then I have yeah. a ultra wide screen on beside it, which is really awesome because you can put a lot of windows in there. And then I have my um, iPad Pro underneath, so that's kind of like my third screen. Uh, is that the uh, sidecar yeah. thing yeah, then where I it sidecar. connects? Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's actually what? Well, yeah, but what's really it? What do you? What do you like? As a screen, what does the iPad give you than a normal just any <laughs> any screen? So it, it it's kind of. I don't use that primary. I don't use the iPad primarily for that, but I use this small screen for like a lot of like chat, like small applications. So a lot ah, of like okay. chats, Slack, um, and then I love using. You know how like Adam's like shifting from over at uh, that desktop. Yeah, yeah. What's that called? I don't know what that feature is, but like a yeah, like multiple three finger desktops. swipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Expose or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, yeah. So I like using swiping on uh, my small iPad screen with like my music control, so Spotify or whatever. So it's just like just the small little app. It's the control there. hub. The iPad's yeah. like the control hub. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm always right. I wanted to try the side cover, then I just have never needed the need. Yeah. Never had the need for an iPad. Yeah. Okay, okay. guys. So I've built like a lot of the unique components. So now I'm going to just going to be like duplicating some components and changing them a bit. So I guess the first thing, because it gets real hectic in the navigator, I'm just going to like close collapse all the Okay. all the divs so I can see everything properly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this component three times, uh, four times actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the class name um, so that we can keep track of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to times that by four. So firstly, down below here, mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily need to do a custom class, but it's probably a good idea um, to do it. Um, just in case you do do do, do something unique to um, the uh, you know the, the particular section, like for example, uh, let me see. Yeah, for example, like the image background here will need to be um, will need to be black, right? So um, and there's like some padding around here as well. So it's just be best to, to to make custom classes so that they don't. It's just easier to manage. So I'm going to call this, I'll probably start calling this like what it's actually called at this, this point. Uh, I'll just go feature two. Home feature two, component. Home feature two, image wrapper. Again, check out client first documentation. You'll notice that Adam, when he's renaming classes, there are dashes and then there are underscores. Underscores usually follow a component. Component name. To content. All right, sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna change this background to black and I'm gonna add some padding here. I'm just guessing at this point how much padding I'll need probably four lamps. Okay, cool. All right. And then sell to anyone. And I don't need this list here. So I'm going to remove that. I feel like the hardest part, because you have everything prepped, it's so quick and fast. But mm -hmm. I think one of the hardest parts or the more time consuming parts is like the branding process like in the design oh. process and like making those For decisions sure. right and once those decisions are set and the consistency of the brand the look and feel then boom you can like apply it to the structure or the layout 100 percent, 100 percent. and also thinking about in the design process making something that's going to be scalable mm -hmm. um, as well. sure, right? like a branding Especially that's going to going to be able to scale mm -hmm. Like you're process. saying in terms of scale from other pages, like the components or like the style. Yeah, like site just creating, on other pages. creating, yeah, like creating buttons that are like thinking about it from a design systems point of view. Yeah. Like yes. how does this scale across a website and how can I reuse some of these components, mm -hmm. but also make it feel like they're unique and that there's variation, um, which I think it's these guys have nailed and these are very simple layouts. Um, so yeah, I would uh, continue to like 
just duplicate all these because now I'm, I'm starting to create some variability, but the structure set stays the same. And the nice thing is these are mobile responsive already. Like we don't have to, we don't have to build for mobile. You'll maybe have to like change a few things, but for the most part, it's mobile responsive. Um, so yeah, build once, use twice. Mm -hmm. Adam, or sorry, not oh. Adam, Daniel. You got yeah. a question, Daniel Smith, I mean. Why not use absolute positioning tool rather than the margins and padding tool? Hey, I would love for you to come on, come on the stream if, if you don't, if you're not shy. Come on, come on down. But anyways, Join yeah, us. We, we, we can add. Yeah, you can. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Bring on. But so Daniel's asking about the sticker overlays. Uh, why not use absolute positioning tool rather than margins and padding tool? Yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, I could. I just think. I don't know, just looking at this quickly, I'm thinking that it's probably going to scale better with the with the margin just because it's related to the image wrapper. Now I've sent so I've the image wrapper is determining the, the positioning of this sticker. So basically I made it flex. So the starting point is the middle of the of of the wrapper. And so I'm guessing because this is like also has like a fixed width. I'm able to control the the positioning of this sticker based on the, the the size of this image. If that makes sense. If I were to use like absolute positioning, it it's more tied to um, I, I can't basically have it start from the center. Yeah, it's, mm. <laughs> I'm terrible at explaining this stuff. So basically, if I were to do like minus twenty percent, oh sorry, I wouldn't do that. I'd go 15% because basically I'm saying there's 15% spacing here. Yeah. And then let's say I go 20% here, right? But as this scales, I bet you it won't scale very well because it's, it's, it's basic. It's positioning is based on the, the outer div. Um, the if that parent, makes sense. parent div, right? Yeah. Whereas I want to achieve and, and tell me if there's a way of doing this. I want to achieve it where I can control the positioning from the, from the center rather than from the border of the parent div. That's a good point. So I think if we just go back to my original, this will scale much better with the image. See how it like stays with the image. Mm -hmm. It just scales better. So that's using the, the margins and padding tool. Yes. And with you know, web design, there's like a thousand ways of doing it. Yeah, this. there's different ways of doing it. Yeah, yeah. This, just for this particular use case, I, I, I would use that. Another thing, okay, I might as well just jump in because look, we're at, we're at an hour. Yeah. I still got a bit to do, but I've built a fair bit of the site. It'd just be a matter of like renaming classes, which is literally the most time consuming part. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into like how I would handle this parallax. Yeah. Um, again, building the interaction once and using it twice. So I'm just gonna build the interaction once um, and I'm going to go to the interactions panel. I'm gonna to go to while scrolling in view, I'm gonna to click to add an animation and I'm gonna call this the parallax. Sorry, I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez, parallax, no double R. R. Um, and I'm going to get yeah, parallax sticker. And so I'm going to apply this to, uh, I'm going to click move and it's going to apply to the interaction trigger so that I can use this same animation for all the stickers. It's not unique to this sticker. So I've selected the effect to not be on the class, but the interaction trigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, minus 10 VH. Uh, and then scroll at 100%, I'm going to go 10 VH. And you'll see that it, as I scroll down the page, it should uh, move up upwards. So wait, I, think, I think I'm getting it wrong. If we reverse this. Okay, so nice. see how it moves, nice. right? And now all, all I need to do is I can now, I built that once, I just apply the same, nice. the same interaction to all of them. And it's really quick. So for this one, boom, 
again using this like component or templatize mindset exactly so once so yeah you can apply it yeah build times. exactly so yeah it That's it'll so work good. for all of these um once once i go ahead and create all of them too i do feel like these are a little these like images of exporter are a little larger than what they are on the website oops mm -hmm. sorry um so i'd probably tweak the, the positioning but anyway we have we have the parallax oh, effect so good and, and that is that is just really scalable and it adds a nice touch yeah brings us a lot a little bit more and cool. it, these these are the small little things the small interactions mm. that really make all those micro delights the micro you know makes it makes it come alive even these what about here. the the g dollars yeah yeah the g dollars it's so let's jump into the g dollars time consuming Can part but let's do the g do dollars i think so. this is like, yeah like this uh, we got three minutes but i think this would be them pretty much because then everything else is pretty flat right it's just an image um and yeah straightforward which we've already kind of shown i think the last one would be those Whoa. g dollars it's a <laughs> three i'll action. just build this first wow the amount of income earned by gum that's pretty insane it is wow. insane hey have you guys three, you guys use it i still haven't used it yet no i know it's always it's one of the ways the guys figma uh to monetize their libraries on figma oh uh, okay. um but that's the only kind of uh, courses and whatnot obviously but i haven't you, haven't used you it share a reloom library are your own libraries and put it on on Gumroad? You could, yeah. Really? I actually go, guys. have been talking to someone in the community that was interested in creating uh -huh. a component library and then using Gumroad as a way to monetize it and having a private link because you can there private share. So if obviously if you paid for uh, that component library, you can um, get a private link and get access to it. Get after it, guys. There you go. This one try make, make money. 3.3 let's try and make 3.3 in a week yeah let's do it together <laughs> let's do it <laughs> yeah nice love it guys nice. there's so many alternative ways to have multiple revenue streams you just have to really look out there right and i think it's the power of the community it's just sharing our knowledge sharing what's out there um yeah well rising yeah. what's what's that phrase rising tight Rising tides lift all boats or something? Well, so yeah, yes, yes, yes. 100%, it's different. Sure always gonna well. be different ways to do it. And there's always new opportunities to, especially on, on, the, on, on the freelancer agency with the client side as well. Like, mm -hmm. There's a lot of opportunities there, I still think, from a, building a design system for your clients. Yeah. And you know, uh, that, that's, yeah, go ahead, Adam. No, no, go ahead. G dollars, uh, G dollars coming? G dollar time. Oh, G dollar time, money. baby. G money. We need R dollars. We need some R dollars. All right. Um, I think I think we should cover another stream where we go over design systems and the whole mindset behind that and how to 100%. even um, optimize and automate your design process as an agency or even a solopreneur, a freelancer. Just using these systems. Okay, G dollars is <laughs> there's so many G dollars. This is, this oh, so is it the same? Just so I understand, is it the same way you applied the stickers? It's just putting in, in putting them in, doing the positioning, exactly. and then adding a parallax exactly. effect, right? There yeah, so duplicating right. it and then figuring out the positioning. So like is it, this is where I'd actually start using the absolute because we have this parent div that is basically that's the parent wrapper that the section div the point. Yeah positioning abides by and so for instance i'm sure as this scales the coins fit inside of that sort of like inside of the frame mm. uh, of of that parent div and so for this like particular coin that's like out on the edge i would say that that's like a minus two percent and oh. and then it's high up so it'd be like 70 percent well probably probably 65 percent right guesstimation <laughs> 62 percent 
Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's like our own individual image. Boom, like that. Oh, yeah. So then, so then, as it scales, as it scales, it's like nice. Works like that. Okay, I've noticed that that this doesn't have full bleed. So I think something's going on here. Minimum width. Ah, I changed this to viewport width. Okay, yeah, that works. Nice. So yeah, I could go ham on the on the coins, but I feel like we can uh, we can finish this off. Right. I didn't. I failed. I didn't complete the site in under oh. an hour. But I'd be keen to get like everyone's opinion on what you want me to build next from this site. Do we want do we want to like jump into the nav bar, um, or do we want to continue off uh, yeah. with some other sections, or do you want to just sort of close this off? What's the most unique section here that we haven't done? I guess everything is kind of done on the website of things, yeah. right? I think yeah. It's so just we've, up, it? we've built every unique basic component here like it's just a matter of like renaming classes and and adding duplicating in sections the yeah it it's just duplicating classes adding in the content and we haven't built the, the footer and we also haven't built you know this more custom section but to be honest that's not crazy mm -hmm. but we also haven't built this interaction here with the nav bar see how the nav bar sort of like works like that which i could yeah. go over i could show you how to build that too the let's offset, see what the let's see what the in. audience yeah give us a let us know in the comments if you want us to continue and build yeah hey Adam, the gumroad you, super header could you preview your build and let's just see how that looks so nice and slow there. yeah sure okay yeah. so it's like i think you want to publish the whole it? coin situations uh what we want to do is we want let uh, us know guys overflow here is it bonus time yes yeah, also let us know What's Adam's punishment? <laughs> yeah, what's my punishment for this clickbait? No salary. Let's, let's let's give Adam a good effort. Let's give him a nice sympathy clap here. Well done. All right, preview it. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right. Navbar. Let's publish. Navbar. Navbar. We still have our... That's a pop. That's Come a on, Webflow. I thought this was meant to be here. sped up. What's going on? <laughs> I swear that has not sped up at all. But I don't know if it's our Australian <laughs> internet. It's probably Australian internet. It's Australian internet. Okay, so this is it, right? All uh, right, this is it. Okay, so I've noticed that the Gumroad has like larger container, uh, but that's easy to change. Okay, so this is this is Gumroad. Yeah. Whoa, this is Gumroad mm -hmm. header. This is our header. Wow. This is, that uh, is, crazy. This is the next section. This is our section. That's like almost identical. I mean, yeah. the spacing here just needs to be tweaked, but this is Gumroad's. And I've noticed that I don't have this Lottie on loop, oh. but that's an easy fix. Just make this Lottie loop. Oh, nice. And then he plays like this. He'll just play like nice. that. Um, all right. That is the awesome. rest is like, should be like pretty, pretty similar, pretty similar. Some, some tweaks, you know, there are some tweaks. Good stuff, Adam. Nice. Looks mad. But considering this is an hour and God knows how many, how much Gumroad put in terms of money yeah. to build this homepage, like it's, we're, we're talking thousands. Uh, it's, it, oh, I guess the point of this is that it, it shows you how much can get done in an hour. Like we're pretty much 80% there, right? Obviously there's probably going to be probably a day, I reckon, of polish, getting it right, getting it probably handed over to a client. But the whole point of this, I guess, is to show that 80% of it, this is where the bulk of sometimes of, of, of time goes into when you're building a project. So now you can focus on the better parts like polishing, making mm -hmm. sure the client's happy uh, and those little small finesse like G dollars, right? And, and, and probably playing around with the G dollars more. So like this, it, it allows you to focus on these cooler small things, which 
you can see like from the Gumroad website, it makes a difference, right? Like these small, smart, um, thoughtful animations make a hell, hell of a lot of a difference for the overall project. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Let's also so that's the point. We demo the, the folders. So let's see. Okay. All right. So. Now this is the whole right, process cool. of cleaning up your design. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So, yeah, so, I so think... yeah, let's talk this through. So what, what's the folder representing here? So these are like classes. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So, so these are all the classes. Let me just go back. And this is the, these are all the classes extension. here. These are like the unique IDs. I, I, I sort of think about it like that. So what we can do is we can change header to home header, right? Mm -hmm. Which is this, this and press apply. And Attribute. then we can open, we can open up this folder. And so, you know, we have the paintbrush here. That's going to be renamed to home so, header, not header 36. It's going to yeah. be named to home, home header. header. So this is a really good way to keep your Webflow project super organized. Mm -hmm. You only have to do it once and it applies to all the, all the, the, the uh, divs and classes inside of that parent class of home header, which is really nice. And this is also a good way because it displays every single class. So if you have like orphan classes or duplicates, it's a good way to rename it and clean it up or delete it. Yeah, exactly. So there we have it. We have this whole section renamed. That is awesome. Uh, except for the actual section section. We, right. And that's because uh, sec <laughs> this is uh, something that I think FinSuite's also looking into how to manage this. I will need to update the entire library to have underscore so that basically every time there's an underscore, there's a new folder that's created. So mm -hmm. if I were to make this underscore header 36, it would actually show up in the folders and mm -hmm. I'll be able to centralize all the sections in the one location and then uh, rename them all in the same place. Uh, right. But we, we won't be making that change until, uh, the folders functionality is released to, to the entire public. Right, but here you can see we have a folder called section. And so all the section classes would, would essentially fit into, into here. And then you can rename it here as well. Again, guys, it's crucial having that consistent language, naming conventions. And you know, if you're working in a large agency, this is really, really important to keep it clean and consistent exactly yeah what's oh, the verdict awesome. guys guys give Good us a me. score <laughs> out of 10 out of what 10? do you guys think what do you guys what do you guys think is this uh how is this build for you guys let's stop the stopwatch pretty good i give it a, i give it yeah i'm i'm, I'm high high Hi, Chris. Eight, nine. nine. Yeah, I could sell it. Put it that way. I could sell this. <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, Kevin, giving it a ten. I would give yeah, it a nine. nine because I think yeah, it would be perfection if you got it all done in an hour. Which, y you know, you'd be the webflow god. But you know, I would. One I'm notch gonna, away. I'm gonna actually change my name now, guys. I don't deserve this title. Webflow dog. <laughs> webflow. Yeah. <laughs> just went for... yeah no dog fire. i just go dog i'm we're king we're for king, king, king for now we're for king yeah. you don't you don't have god status now yet <laughs> and not dog. yet we're for dog <laughs> i'm just a we're for dog hey, you know what humility is the driver of <laughs> Oh, reaching it to perfection. Oh, man. <laughs> you call yourself a dog. <laughs> awesome. Adam, great stuff. Really well done. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun just watching you just do your thing. Really, really cool. Um, I, I sort of it surprised me that people even come to watch watch me do this. <laughs> but uh, um, thanks for yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope, I hope that at least you learned something. I know sometimes it gets a little bit tricky explaining things and doing things under time pressure, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, to let us know what you'd like us to build. If you want us to focus on a particular thing that you've seen in the, like on other websites, you can run through that. Or if there are any other websites you'd like us to do a speed build 
uh, with. Um, also very open to design sessions. If you want to see a peek into how we approach mm. designing, I think that would also be interesting. So a mm -hmm. couple of ideas out there. Let us know what you guys want to see from us. Um, these are yeah. fun. We are really open. So please do engage with us guys. Like whatever you guys want, whether you want to have some people come and share some of their projects and we can critique it or like, you know, tweak it and things like that or see if we can rebuild it with the library, whatever, let us know. And we're really flexible. So now's the time to, to share. All right. John Duvall, nice. 100. Good stuff. All right. I think that wraps it up. Mm -hmm. um, guys, any, any last few words before we close this stream? Um, I'm all good. I'm all good. Maybe, maybe yeah. I'll record myself creating the Gumroad uh, nav bar and, and send it out in the Slack channel as well. If anyone wants awesome. to see that. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for joining everyone. Thanks for hanging cool. out. It was fun. Sweet. See you guys. See ya. Bye. See you next time.